for this third thing to cheer you up, we thought we'd do something a little different, being that it's the first Monday in May tonight would have marked the 150th Met Gala. Unfortunately, like so many other events right now, the gala was postponed. So we thought we'd throw our own version of fashion's biggest night, showcasing your pets while we're all staying in. We asked you to submit videos of your pets dressed up in this year's Met Gala theme about time as they walk the red carpet at home. We received submissions from all over the world. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the inaugural Late Late Pet Gala. The Late Late Pet Gala. Now, this evening, I'm joined by celebrity stylist and E! Live from the Red Carpet host, the extraordinary, the dashing, Brad Goreski. How are you, Brad? Are you well? I'm doing great. I'm so excited to be here, James. I'm such a fan. Thanks well, it's, it's fashion's biggest night. Now, if the Met Gala were happening, You'd be in New York. You'd, I often, I've seen you before covering the red carpet. Are you missing being there? You know, yeah, I, I am. I think, you know, it's such a, a great night of celebration of fashion and art and music and all these worlds colliding. So, yeah, I'm definitely missing it, but I'm so excited about this. Well, tonight, we're going to go live to the red carpet where we will judge this year's positively stunning... <laughs> I wrote that myself, it's all me. Uh, late, late, pet gala looks. So this is so exciting. Everyone is arriving. Let's check some out. Action. It's the first Monday in May, which means it's fashion's biggest night. And all of the good girls and boys are in attendance and looking fierce this evening. Dogs, bunnies, chickens, guinea pigs, it's the whole kit and caboodle. The level of talent is unprecedented, and we're covering it all for you tonight. This year's theme is about time, fashion, and duration. So all the looks tonight will be inspired by fashion's past and future. I hope you haven't had dinner yet, because this is going to be a T-R-E-A-T. So there we go. I love that that last person has even built the infamous red stairs. Yes, very key element of the Met Gala. A huge key element. Well, let's go to our first look. This is from Val, who is in Brookfield, Wisconsin. She sent us this clip of Coco. What do we think of Coco's look? I'm in love with Coco's look because the train at the Met Gala is always a red carpet home run. That's my favorite part. I love the reveal when she shakes <laughs> off the sunglasses. Well, yes, and yes. You can really see Coco in all of her glory. It's yeah, so it's good. Well, because the reveal has become, I think, sort of post Gaga. Yes. Who did that thing with almost four different looks. Coco has very much stolen that in a way. She started with the train, gets to the top. The glasses are gone. Hand me a glass of champagne. Um, right. Beautiful work, Coco. Next up, this is Lucy, and this is from uh, Elisa from Torrance, California. What do we think of Lucy here, Brad? What are our thoughts? Well, what I like is that Lucy dress for the theme this mm. year, which was about time. So we can see that with her gorgeous headdress. You know, it looks a little bit share, sort of like 1997, but I think if I could turn back time, I would get rid of that wig. <laughs> <laughs> we need a deep conditioning treatment. We need some straightening tools, something to just freshen that up a bit. You're right. I like the nod to the, to the theme. It, it, it yes. was very, very impressive, as is the red carpet with the floral uh, decorations, which obviously anyone who's seen the, the documentary the first Monday in May would know that Anna Wintour very, very particular about the floral uh, aspect around the carpet. And, and for that, we will give Elisa uh, extra points. Next, this is Carter from Houston, Texas, who sent this clip of Brutus. What do we make of Brutus's look here? <laughs> I mean, it's I... timeless. It's timeless is what it is. <laughs> Truly, truly timeless. You know, I actually heard that this look was custom made by Bark Jacobs. <laughs> um, it took them two months to make this, if you can believe. I think it's absolutely 
the perfect Met Gala look. When fashion and versatility come together, it's a match made in heaven. Well, what I also love is Brutus's commitment to the, the stare and the look. Like, Brutus yes. knew what look he was going for when he hit that carpet, and nothing is going to change that look. That's it. You get one pose, and the photographers have to get the angles. That's this type of dress. It, right? You're absolutely right, Brad. In and let them get the photo. It's on That's you it. now. It's I've done my bit, meet me halfway. Exactly. Next, we're going to look at Marlo Burke, here sent in by Susan from Drakeit, Massachusetts. What do we think of Marlo here? I mean, I love this. I'm living for this. I think that she is ready for her close-up, Mr. Yeah. Dog Mill. Mm -mm. She's giving me, like, Sonia by Sonia Morgan collection. It's a little Carol Channing, it's a little Liza Minnelli. Sequins are always the go-to on the Met Gala red carpet, and I think Marlo Burke killed it. And captured beautifully, I will say. Um, yeah, I agree. Next to walk is Baby, who was sent in by Christina from Redondo Beach here in California. What do we think of this? Well, you know, the, the Met Gala red carpet has become a place where you can make a very bold yeah. statement. Yeah. I think Baby really does this. She yeah. uses the cape to really convey where she is at the moment, mm. you know, what she believes in. And it's, it's nice to know that Baby brings her own ball wherever she goes, you know? You know what I think this is? This is the sort of look you get it's for someone's first Met Gala. It's a, it's, a, it's a Met Gala where they've said, I'm here, bitches, get out the way. That's right. Now, this next one we have here is the Bearded Dragon, Philip Arthur Norrington, sent in by Erica from Virginia Beach. Virginia, what do we think of this outfit here? He knows the rule to men's dressing, which is everything is in the accessories. Yes. We've got great cufflinks, we've got the top hat, and lizard skin is absolutely everywhere this year. Well, if we see him walk again, for a moment you're like, oh, this is, it could be The Rock, it could be Ryan Gosling. You know, <laughs> they're there, they're saying, guys, I'm wearing a tux, I've got a top hat, it's about the gowns, yeah. but you better believe I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm moving quickly. Grab the shot if you can get it. Yeah. Get your shot if you can. I'm not here for press. You're absolutely right. Thank you. That is so A-list. Yeah. That's what that was. That was an A-list movie star. It was Al Pacino. <laughs> I'm here for a canapé and a, and a free drink. Now, Brad, I know it's difficult, but who had your favorite looks at this year's Pet Gala? Ooh, I'm gonna have to say it was a very close tie between Marlo Burke and Brutus. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Two strong looks. Very. That wouldn't be out of place at any pet gala in history. No, and really make you realize that you have to bring your A game. Yeah, if you don't make an effort, don't show up. Well, congratulations to tonight's best dressed pets, Marlo and Brutus. And thank you to everyone who submitted videos for this year's Late Late Pet Gala. Um, we're, we're so thankful and blown away by it. And thank you to you, Brad Goreski. Uh, it's been so lovely chatting to you. I feel we should do this every year. My pleasure. I'd love to, James. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you so much. We'll be right back with more of the Late Late Show, everybody.